And I'm Heather Branch here with Pat asking for his insight on the things that you could be working on now to better prepare for your financial future. The retirementkey.com is where you can go to start the conversation with Pat. Of course, Abe Abish, the entire team at Abish Financial Services are here to help you get some answers to your questions when it comes to your retirement savings and investments. We also have links posted in the show notes. So you can just click there or again, find us anytime at theretirementkey.com. So you are, you are, an, and I appreciate this about you because I think that a lot of us have gotten to the point where we avoid the news and we don't want to look at this stuff anymore. So yeah. I appreciate that you are a news junkie and a financial headline junkie. A little too much. <laughs> right? So well, it can be a little bit too much for any of us at any given point. And Listen, I don't I know that the 24 hour news cycle was meant to benefit a lot of us in society. But at this point, I feel mm. like it may be not doing any anybody any favors. Anymore. No, a lot of times what it's switched to is getting clicks and likes and uh, revenue generation. Yep. So yep. you yep. do definitely need to separate out. Doesn't mean it's there's no truth in it. It just means that sure. it's a lot of it is being done for another purpose. Right. Got it. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. That's one thing to remember whenever you're watching any kind of network that the advertiser dollars have That's a voice drives it all. I always say that. I said, you watch, have uh, a voice. you know, CNBC, you watch Bloomberg. I go, what's their main interest to get you to the next commercial? Hmm. It's it's here's the thing. We're not saying that everything that you see is bad, but we're just saying, take it all with a grain of salt. Put a put Two a filter over happen it. at the same time. Somebody can mm-hmm. be giving me very relevant, good information while at the same yep. time trying to make a profit off of it. Yep. Yep. Well, Obviously, you don't have to be a news or a financial headline junkie to have – there's no way to avoid all the talk about the interest rates, Correct. inflation, where we're headed with it. Not just the cons, but the pros, particularly yeah. for those who are saving for retirement or are in retirement, how to take advantage of the economic circumstances yes, that that's have the evolved. huge change that has occurred really since yeah. the 11 interest rate hikes. Yeah. Uh, Massive change. I mean, considering people would be able to go into secure, safe investments Mm -hmm. really, you know, prior to 2022 for almost 15 years, the rates were close to zero. You know, you could lock your money up, make one percent or so, but everybody knew it was lousy. So they ran into the stock market. But now if you can reasonably make guaranteed five, five and a quarter, five point four, I'm not saying though those are like the sky on fire rates of return. But as far as a risk-free rate of return, that is a very attractive pretty yield. It's pretty um, good. And again, doesn't mean you just put all of your money in there. Again, right. part of a diversified portfolio. That's right. That's right. So looking for options and opportunities while still managing the doom and gloom that, Correct. you know, and I have one of my one of my friends that I work with. I don't know if you know Brandon Bowen, but I think you guys have a lot in similarity and personality. He always talks about as a person, I, I'm the most optimistic person you'll ever meet. But when it comes to your retirement plan, I have got to be so pessimistic. Correct. <laughs> I Just think be that the same goes for you, Pat. What if, what if it's like you... You yeah. know, it's great. Uh, oh, Pat, I don't really plan on any intention of living past age 90 and I'm going to bounce the last check to the undertaker. Well, yeah. that's great until you're 95. Uh, that's we need to make sure we're planning for things mm-hmm. that you may not foresee. That's uh, right. We can't foresee everything. We have to do it. We have to talk doom and gloom to make sure that you, dear retiree, dear podcast listener, are going to go into this phase of your financial life with more confidence. So let's talk about where we are with this interest rate stuff and what people are saying. So for the last few years, obviously, because of that, the term soft landing has been tossed around a lot. And so the idea is that when the Fed keeps raising interest rates as they've done, they are do the effort is to do so slowly to fight inflation, but to do it without causing us to go into a recession. This is what mm-hmm. inevitably a soft landing is, correct? That's what they're trying to do. Yes. Got it. Okay. So JP Morgan CEO, Jamie Diamond, he actually doesn't think it's going to go as well as we're all hoping. He offered a bit of a gloomy outlook to the Wall Street Journal and said this. Things may not go as well as people expect. The odds of a soft landing, the market kind of prices in 70%, I think it's half of that. You know, as a business person, I try to be prepared for all of that. 
It looks a little bit more like the 70s to me. And I point out to a lot of people, things look pretty rosy in 1972. They were not rosy in 1973. So don't get lulled into a false sense of security because the today looks okay, the tomorrow's going to be okay. So just trying to separate the two. He just had to bring up the 70s, didn't he? Yeah. He just had to bring it up because, and there are a lot of people not even talking about the economy, the stuff that we're seeing as far as students protesting, people are saying yes. how weird it is, the similar world we're living in to what happened in the 70s. Yes, I think a lot of folks, if I could just use the term unease. Yeah. It's everyone is a little bit uneasy with what's yep. happening here and they can't quite put their finger on it. Okay. Uh, it, they feel the tension. They feel the really the bifurcation, even in the conversations, we have extremes. Now we have an extreme on the left. We have an extreme on the right. Nobody really wants to say too much just because they feel they're going to get, you know, mobbed and shut down, you know, by the mob. So people are often quiet, but coming yeah. into the economy, this is a, you know, extremely important understanding. How did we get here? This wasn't something that just occurred in 2008. This has been occurring, if you really just want to go back a little bit here, and it doesn't tell the whole story, started around the dot-com bubble bursting around the year 2000. We immediately mm -hmm. lowered interest rates, setting the fuse for the financial crisis. Interest okay. rates went low, artificially low. We did not have to cut rates to the degree we did back in 2000, mm -hmm. uh, from you know, for 2000, 2001, 2002. We didn't need to cut rates as far as we did, mainly because the economy was still pretty good. We just had a segment of the economy that was overvalued and having a bit of a problem. So when you had all these mortgages go out, people refinanced, got larger mortgage, were able to attain, obtain mortgages they shouldn't have been able to obtain. So right. when interest rates went back up, we had the financial crisis. Again, lowering rates back down injecting massive amounts of liquidity into the system. And we kind of mm -hmm. continued along at zero rates, really up until around 2016, they started gradually increasing the rate. 2019, very, very important milestone here. And everybody forgets about it. September of 2019, rates were at two and a quarter. We had mm -hmm. a massive liquidity problem in the banks. Everyone forgets about this because the pandemic occurred in 2020 at the beginning of the year. But so it what happened immediately at the happened, end of 2019, and then the pandemic hit at the beginning of 2020, bingo. so everybody just so, got but it. But the Fed was lowering interest rates and injecting $80 billion into the system at the end of 19. So hmm. they were already looking that we raised rates, the banks were going underwater, they were trying to save the banks. So hmm. that occurred when the pandemic occurred, they thought, oh, we really have a problem here, lower rates down, inject more money because of the unemployment, et cetera. And yeah. that caused a massive bubble because that was coming right on the heels of all the liquidity and zero interest rates that we had after the financial crisis. So now they're forced to say, hold on, way too much money is in the system. Interest rates are way too low. This is causing a rise, a bubble in everything. Got to get those rates up as high as possible. 11 interest rate increases. Now we're up at around five and a quarter, five and a half. This yeah. is again causing the problem because the banks, as interest rates go up, the bank's values are being underwater. So we need to still protect the banks. You've noticed over the past few weeks, New York Community Bank, I believe there was a bank, First Republic up in Philadelphia is having some problems. Smaller banks, not big banks, smaller banks are running into trouble right now. So here's the scenario. Should they raise interest rates? Should they lower interest rates? If they raise interest rates right now, frankly, it might be better for the economy. It might be better for inflation. Why mm -hmm. they're not going to do it is they don't want to put too much pressure on the banks right now. So holding steady is kind of the best play. What were they talking about? And really where I think the Fed made a major mistake was forecasting a rate cut at the end of last year. That really perked the market up. Was it up. the Fed, though, that forecasted that? Or was it, it was everybody screaming on Wall Street asking for it? The Fed actually no, said it? it was okay. the Fed. The Fed basically okay. came out and said, we're going to read the tea leaves, and we do forecast an eventual rate cut. Everyone hmm. in, went into 2024 thinking we were going to have six interest rate I cuts. I know. It was insane. As soon as we started the year, that came off the table. They cut it down to three. They threw them to the latter part of the year. And yeah. now we're thinking, this seems like a carrot on a stick. He wants people to believe he's going to cut interest rates, but he actually doesn't want to. Hmm. They put themselves in their own pickle. They shouldn't have said anything. They shouldn't have forecasted. 
They should have just said interest rates are what they are. We're just going to go about this and not in, not give the market any clue as to what was going on. Because at this stage, with all of the banks having some problems, they're going to try to hold this. But we don't live in an isolated world. We're not just the United States. Other countries are buying our debt. Japan, foreign countries, because we have mm -hmm. a higher interest rate. This is putting pressure on their currencies. This is not a situation that can last. So I'm anticipating an eventual rate cut, not because for the health of the economy, but because something's going to break and we're eventually going to have to come in and have intervention. You can see this in the yield curves. Right now, short-term rates are higher than long-term rates. That is right. unusual. That should not be that way. And okay. it's been going on for a considerably long period of time. That's been, it's so, been that way for almost a year? Longer? More than a year. Okay. Uh, so it's been more than a year at this point, which is an yeah. extraordinary long, long period of time. And everybody's almost yeah. like, yeah, that's supposed to be a recession indicator. It doesn't seem like it's working. Let's throw that out. It's not working. Well, there are other measurements. There is the typical one, two-month, 10-year, they do the comparison. That's mm -hmm. generally predictable, but not 100% of the time. There is another measurement, the three-month to the 10-year. I'm watching that. That yeah. is typically 100% predictable. The huh. last time we've had an inverse yield curve from the three to the 10-year for this mm -hmm. long a period of time, not to panic you, was prior to 2008, prior to 1974, and in 1928, prior to the Great Depression. So the longer mm. we hold this off, what it's telling us is that, yeah, we are eventually going to have intervention, but it could be very severe. Uh, okay. So that is a concern that we have. What do you do? So, well, okay, point, well, first of all, I mean, yeah. you're, you're then agreeing with Mr. I Diamond. You're saying I, that there's I'm a false sense God of security. We get a soft landing. I pray to God we get a soft landing. Who wouldn't want a soft landing? But right, what if course. we don't? And more importantly, this is the thing that we always get back to, especially, listen, back in, when was it, when was it a really good, 2019, 2020, 2020, 2021. 2021 was a great year. The markets were killing it. And people yeah, that you were coming in, up. talking to you, and people that were heading into retirement, everybody was feeling good. But this is what I just worry about for somebody who's retiring now, for myself and my husband, 20 years from now, you got to think about so many things when we get into retirement, because the job has stopped. Correct. The money that you have worked so hard to earn and save now has to produce that income Two things, to sustain you. So how do you keep and it working? Income. Yeah. yeah. So again, serious conversation. Let's look at what you've collected. Let's see what you've had. And let's not just focus on high rate of return. That seems to see when I meet with folks, what I'm seeing now are portfolios that have a lot of cash and a little sure. bit of market. And the stuff that's Can't in the market them. is super aggressive. So you can see folks kind of anticipating like, oh, we've really had a good run. I want to get out, but they don't know what to do. The only conservative asset they can look at is cash or a money market. Well, I'm not saying to go out and do this. Don't take it as a recommendation. But what if you did go out and buy a 10-year bond or a 20-year bond? You're okay. going to be making close to 5% for the next 10 years. And you may think, ah, that's not that great. Well, you're assuming interest rates are going to continue to go up. If the government intervenes and they bring interest rates back down 1% to zero and you're making five for the next because 10 years. Because you've locked in the 5% rate right on that bond. That's yeah. not a bad deal. And if interest yeah. rates go down, what happens to bond prices? They go up. So not only yeah. are you going to make a higher yield, you're going to make some appreciation. Now, okay. that isn't a move that you would want to do with all the dollars. You may want to have a little right. bit there. Or right. you may even want to look at some other products that are going to generate good income. A lot of the insurance companies are taking advantage of these rates, and we are seeing some annuity income rates that are absolutely incredible. So what I've been meeting with my clients, uh, some fairly high net worth clients, is mm -hmm. we bifurcate the portfolio. We take a small amount and we squeeze the ever loving heck out of it for income. Okay. Once we get your income set, social securities, pension possibly, you get that guaranteed income stream. We mm -hmm. locked in that income. And now you have money over on the side that you can invest conservatively, aggressive, moderate, however you wish, but that's only going to be to cover incidentals. Maybe you need to repair the bathroom. Maybe you want to go on a vacation, extra expenses above the regular budget that we already have in place. That's mm -hmm. security to put in a baseline that you know, come hell or high water, I'm able to pay my bills for the rest of my life. Right. It takes the pressure off. Why yep. do you want to go into your retirement worrying about what's going on in the market? 
you should not have your whims and your retirement career tied to the market that has no emotions and that does not care what you're going through in your life. You need to set up a plan outside of that. Don't concentrate on your neighbors. Don't listen to the water cooler. Don't have a fear of missing out. Get a plan, put it in place, and make yourself happy. That's the only people you have to concern yourself with. With, uh, with. Don't worry about anyone else. Take care of yourself here. And also stay open mentally because, again, open. there I, I are so many folks, opportunities in, now. Oh, annuities. I hate annuities. I hear horrible things about them. But Here's even the question. bonds. What did you Just hear about Just a couple years them? ago, weren't bonds dead a couple of years ago? I mean, I, were I was they were talking with zero. Abe, but Abe at Abish, this point, they're not bad. Uh, <laughs> Abe Abish of Abish Financial Services was on the radio, WML, talking about get that dead money out of your portfolio. We were Correct. talking about bonds that are now, Absolutely. you were just saying, why not take a look? Why not take a look? I mean, everything has its season. So, you know, it, it's like, I'm not going to garden in the middle of the winter. I'm not going to buy a bond in a zero interest right. rate environment. Right, right. Well, now it's kind of spring is springing. We have interest rates of five, five and a quarter, not a bad deal. But that does reflect back into annuity income. Uh, higher rates, locking those in. And if yeah. you can guarantee higher income in this rate environment, and then interest rates do fall, okay, you're good. You're really good. And if rates fall and the market does up, well, we still have a decent amount in the market for you. So we're going to get you to win. We look to move towards those next opportunities, because that's another thing I also think that's really important for, for retire, t retirees of 2024 and moving forward it is a different game than your parents and your grandparents a had. A totally when different game. And if you're it's living in this environment where, you know, fear of missing out, everything needs to be in the market, please be careful. This has been the longest running bull market in history. Yeah. It's going to end. I don't yeah. know when. If I knew when, I'd be in Tahiti. But it's going to end. <laughs> And they always end. It's just a matter of when. So, all right, you want to be there. You want to get some of the ups. But at what point are you going to step away from that gambling table and say, no more? I'm keeping my profit. I need to pay myself and let the market, again, operate. But I don't want it to rule my life helping you to to figure these things out because it is a lot just because just like lot. we were saying it's different than it was for your parents or grandparents it can't stay stagnant there's the line is always moving but you don't have to figure it out by yourself that's that's no, I mean, we, this is why you have down. a job pat <laughs> yes that's why I, I sit and every meeting i have i go through a stress test yeah. i show folks this is how your portfolio would have performed during 2008 Mm -hmm. And they kind of like, oh, wow, it's a lot more volatile than I thought. Here's mm -hmm. your portfolio. Do you realize you own far more Microsoft or far more Amazon or far more uh, Alphabet than you imagined? Because mm -hmm. it's in every investment that you hold. And so we see replication going through. So it's not a matter of me coming in and beating up their portfolio. What I'm showing them is they have a portfolio that's meant for growth. Yep. And we're talking about a portfolio that's meant for income. Yep. They're two different tasks. So we try to reallocate towards an income portfolio. We call it the second phase of your financial life for exactly. a very important reason. You've worked so hard to earn and save and grow. Now you are in your 50s, 60s, maybe 70s. You are thinking about stepping away from the working world, getting to that phase of life we all work so hard to get to. And it's time to make your money work hard for you. This is what the entire team at Abish Financial Services is ready to help you do. The retirementkey.com is where you can go to start the conversation. If you have questions about some of the things Pat's been talking about, if you want to talk to anybody on the team, we are here to help. We also have links posted in the show notes. So you can just click there or again, find us anytime at the retirementkey.com.